This is Flinders on the Mornington Peninsula. It's ruggedly beautiful, with views out to Bass Strait. I'm here to visit a garden I've been really excited about. It's only a couple of years old, but already there are plenty of things to see, created by a very thoughtful gardener. Jo Ferguson has spent her life absorbed in horticulture. She's worked in revegetation and environmental management and graphic design. And now it's all come together in her work as a garden designer. It's all about the feeling of the garden. When we did this garden, it's only really two years old. Um, so one of the questions that we asked ourselves is, what, what is it that will make your heart sing? So for me, it was being able to walk barefoot on sand. So I just love the gravel because I can get out in the morning, out of bed, in my pyjamas and walk straight out into the garden and, and garden in bare feet. And also the grasses. To see the wind in the, in the grasses, is, it's just really evocative and it just makes me feel, I don't know, like just really who I am, um, really centred in myself. Wow, this doesn't feel like a new garden. Well, actually, these trees are 80 years old. Oh, wow. So we salvaged them from a friend in Mildura. And they're so gorgeous with the banksias. Yeah, so the foliage links in throughout the whole garden. We've used grey foliage um, within this part of the garden. Um, and we've had to raise them up, of course, because they need really good drainage. Uh, and it's quite wet here in Flinders. But they're just beautiful. If I could get more, I would, but yeah. Need another 80 years. Yeah. <laughs> Can we go look at the rest? Yep. It's, it's a big experiment. Like, none of this has been designed. Uh, I think probably the most area that's been designed is that corner, which I was really experimenting with colour. So when I'm at the kitchen sink, I look out into this garden and I see the pinks and the yellows and the oranges um, and the blues, and it just makes me really happy. So. That garden, it's not about whether it's native or exotic or um, this or that kind of plant. It was really just about a colour palette. Oh, what a beautiful sheltered spot in an exposed garden. Yeah, it sort of em embraces you, this beautiful uh, wall made of the terracotta agricultural drains. Is that what they are? So where did they come from? My husband, Simon, he works on the freeways. And I think it was during the Dingley bypass, he was asked to bury them because of the road was going through the old market garden. And so, no, he thought, oh, I'm going to salvage those. He dug them up? Yeah. Oh, wow. So they've been sitting in a box for ages. And then when we did this extension, we wanted to create a curved wall. And so, yeah, we've used these terracotta uh, pipes to create some permeability. It's a great tip for like blocking wind too, to let it sort of gently filter through so it doesn't leap over the top and get you on the other side. Yeah, as well as providing views through to the greens and the colours of the flowers. It's actually a really beautiful little intimate space. And handmade. Yeah, each one has been handmade. Um, out of a slab of clay. Wow. In about the 1940s, I believe. Absolutely gorgeous. And no doubt you'll have plenty of habitat in here in the long term as well. Yeah, the spiders are already moving in. <laughs> this is so gorgeous. It's like it's got a similar feel to other parts of the garden, but it's all Australian plants. Yeah. This is where my heart lies, in the native grasslands on the basalt plains. And my favourite grass is Dicolacne, which has so much landscape potential, you don't really see it used in gardens. But it's so lyrical, the way it moves, and that 
beautiful plume that comes up um, over summer when everything else is struggling in the drought. You, the native grasses just sing. And that beautiful pot of leafers is such a beautiful kind of, it looks like a whole fried egg in there. Yeah, and it's always packed full of pollinators. I love this paper daisy. It's such a winner when it comes out. It's gorgeous, it isn't it? And so flowers. responsive to the sun. Yeah, and it yeah. just flowers non-stop. I can see that this is a garden that you've created for yourself. Yeah. But how do you go about designing gardens that can represent other people, designing them for clients? Yeah. Every single garden that I've designed is different. And it's because of the person that I'm designing for. Because that's what a garden is, isn't it? It's something that people are part of. Yeah, well, I, I really feel that, that gardens really bring people back to who they actually really are. And a lot of it comes back to memory, whether it's childhood memory or um, memory of like holidays where they were really happy or things that were really meaningful to people when they were children can be really powerful. So if you can get to that information, then it's it just makes a garden really um, special. and. I've actually seen people change through the process. I think this garden is such a great lesson in not judging a garden by what it looks like. Of course, it is beautiful, yeah. but it's about what it feels like. It's a lesson we could all take in life. Yeah, that's, that's what we're aiming for as garden designers, is just to bring people back to who they really are and just feel. Like, I think a lot of time we're just going around, you know, thinking, 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 and we forget to just stop and just feel. So if we can get people to do that, just for a few moments, which is really healing and, and possibly it's um, healing for the whole planet, if we can all just get back to that and what's important. Yeah.